Hi, everyone. You know, as fires rage in Australia and common sense people correct climate cultists' mistaken claims that the blazes have been caused by man-made global warming rather than the dozens of people police have arrested on charges of arson. At least 24 people have been charged in New South Wales over deliberately lighting some of the fires that have devastated vast parts of Australia. Another huge problem comes to the fore. It's the problem of feral camels, an issue pitting animal lovers against native aboriginals and causing cognitive dissonance for many environmentalists who seem to worship nature, but who also blame camels for carbon emissions and methane emissions supposedly driving their monster of climate change. The result? A massive cull of feral camels conducted by the government, which will leave, get this, carcasses on the ground for days. Hi everyone, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV. And indeed, it has started. The shocking cull of camels, a mass slaughter funded by Australian tax dollars, conducted by snipers and helicopters. And what are some of the factors involved in this story? Well, AFP reports. Aboriginal leaders in South Australia state said extremely large herds of non-native camels have been driven towards rural communities by drought and extreme heat, threatening scarce food and drinking water, damaging infrastructure, and creating a dangerous hazard for drivers. And according to the Manchester Evening News, the carcasses will be left to dry off before they're burned or buried. How wonderfully pleasant. Indeed, that should be just beautiful for local health conditions. And it does seem to run counter to the worries of Australian climate cultists who wanted the beasts killed because of carbon emissions and methane containing flatulence they were emitting. Now, the main problem seems to be the animals need for water. Indeed, in some areas, they might continue culling the animals. That drives them across government-run roads and into private property. In fact, Marita Baker, who is one of the leaders of a local Aboriginal lands area, said this. We have been stuck in stinking hot and uncomfortable conditions, feeling unwell because the camels are coming in and knocking down fences, getting in around the houses, trying to get water through air conditioners. But some, including a climate cult member, offered their own reasons, writes the Manchester Evening News. Climate change campaigner Craig Hill tweeted, quote, 10,000 camels are being culled in Australia as their flatulence supposedly contributes to climate change. And he added, Considering that human population increase from 1 billion in 1804 to 7.5 billion in 2020, has the increased human flatulence also contributed? It's all about crisis and control, be it concerning humans or camels. And the answer in Australia is to destroy thousands of these unowned camels. Because, well, evidently, it's such a huge problem, it's even worse than Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. That's the damnest thing I ever saw. But is it really that much of a problem? Well, having been to Australia a number of years ago, I actually happen to have some first-hand experience about this. I traveled throughout the outback and Queensland for nearly two months, and I've had some on-site experience studying the environment and land use problems that stem from government management of the land, roads, and water, and the lack of private property and liability institutions there. It's actually the kind of problem that people in the United States solved a century ago in the so-called Wild West. See, Australia's vast interior is mostly desert, but a giant aquifer lies beneath most of the continent, and that's allowed ranchers to live in the area and hydrate their cattle by using what they call bore wells. Now, in many cases, the ranchers own so much land, they actually round up their herds using helicopters, and towns are so far apart that they fly ill people to hospitals via what they call the Royal Flying Doctor Service. In fact, kids don't even go to school together. They operated schools for years via the radio as the kids sat at their homes. And now, of course, they do it via the internet. And camels were introduced to the Australian continent in the 
fees because people saw the advantages that they had for being able to go long distances without having to drink a lot of water. But since then, escaped camels have multiplied, and since Australia has no native predators except crocodiles, which are mostly out on the coastline, they have bred and bred and bred. But this isn't necessarily a problem. Heck, there's a market for camels as work animals and rides and for their meat. The problem is that the feral camels roam over government lands. And just like disputes have arisen over the Aussie government controlling water access to favor certain large corporations that are politically connected. And just like there are now problems with the Australian government running lands that they don't clear a brush, and hence you see massive fires starting up in those, well, they've got the same problem with the camels. Now, skeptics have a hard time imagining how migratory or roaming herd animals could be managed in such a way, especially over long distances. But free market economists know that this problem of the commons, as it is called, was solved more than a century ago in America. In their excellent book, The Not-So-Wild Wild West, Terry Anderson and Peter Hill detail the awesome ways in which Western ranchers, coal miners, gold miners, and farmers created their own system of property respect, dispute resolution, oh. something or just stand there and bleed and restitution all in territories that weren't states and were essentially free of federal controls when it came to livestock the ranchers would often have to drive cattle hundreds of miles so they created systems like branding to denote property and allow for liability should cattle roam into private land the Australian camel problem is a result of government mismanagement and a lack of this kind of private property and inventiveness, this kind of respect for other people and their ownings. And it's made worse by, yes indeed, the government mismanaging water rights and the lands that cause all these fires. The answer is not government involvement, it's private property paradigms and respect for our neighbors. The answer is not to think that the animals need to be culled. It's to think that human beings need to have more individual private property control and respect for their neighbors. The kind of respect that we don't seem to get from people who promote the climate change theory, who promote the idea that perhaps the human population itself needs to be culled or restricted. Something to consider as we look at what happens in Australia. Hey, I know I'm not wearing it today, but people have asked about it, so don't forget everybody, as we conclude this video, please check out our amazing t-shirts at mrc-store, and don't forget to like and subscribe and share these videos whenever you can. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.